Hey guys, I'm Matt from MWA Woodworks, and in this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step how I made this outdoor bench seating from red cedar. For this project, I'm starting with six by six red cedar beams. Normally, these would be used for building outdoor structures, but these will work perfectly for some stout benches. Now, these are rough sawn beams, so I need to start by milling them up square first. To start, I take a couple passes across the joiner to flatten one face. I then flip the beam so that the newly flattened side is facing the fence and then I run the beam across the joiner again. Doing this is going to make sure that I have two flat faces that are square to one another. This is going to be important later when I go to glue them up. Milling these beams up was the most time consuming part of this project prior to applying the finish. And next I head over to the planer to get the other two faces of the beams flat and square as well. I just put the sides that I jointed face down on the planer and the opposing faces are made parallel to it. After a few passes, I have all four sides of each beam flat and squared up. I also need to cut the legs for the bench out of these beams as well and this is a good task for the bandsaw. The bandsaw cuts like butter through this cedar and that's nice because there's no blade deflection at all. My cuts were super straight and pretty clean as far as blade marks go. Now once I resaw one side, I flip it and cut the other side to produce the rough leg. And finally, I send each leg through the planer again to clean up any of the mill marks and get them down to final dimensions. Now before I cut the joinery, I need to trim everything to final length at the miter saw. Even for my 12 inch slider, these beams were a bit too much and so I finished off the cut with a handsaw. To assemble the bench, I'm going to use epoxy. Since these are going outdoors, epoxy is a great choice for an adhesive because it's very water resistant and strong. I'd like to thank Total Boat for helping me with this project and being the sponsor of this video. To use this epoxy, I just need to combine the resin with the hardener in a 2 to 1 ratio and mix it thoroughly. Once combined, I apply an even coat to the glue joints. The seat of the bench is going to be made from three of these beams, so I have just two glue joints. This cuts down on assembly time and also the amount of resin needed. Clamping pressure is applied evenly across the length of the glue up and I wipe down any excess epoxy. Now comes the fun part. I've got to wrangle this thing through my planer to clean up the surfaces and get everything flat again. Since I already flattened everything before, this doesn't take very many passes at all. This is also why I wiped down the glue joint earlier. Less interference from dried epoxy means the piece lays flatter going through the planer. And the next step here is squaring up the edges again at the joiner. Since my legs are going to be built into the sides, they won't be square to the top if the sides aren't square to the top and I'm going to end up with a wobbly bench. Now these ends need to be trimmed up as well, but they're too thick to get through in one pass, so what I ended up doing was running my track saw down one side at full depth. I then flipped it over and transferred my cut line to the other side using a square. I could then use a track saw again to cut the other side, but notice I'm still not all the way through. But no worries, because I can use a hand saw to finish off the part that the track saw couldn't reach. The next step is cutting the joinery in the legs and I begin by laying out where the notches will be cut in the bench top using a marking knife. To get a tight fit, I use one of my legs as a guide to lay out the other side of the notch. Now to hog out these notches, I'm using my table saw with a dado stack. And a quick note, before I began this process, I waxed down the surface of the saw to make sure everything was nice and slidey. Now what I found the safest approach here to be is to make one pass, then turn off the saw before moving the workpiece back to the other side of the blade and making the next cut. And just like that, I have a clean notch and it's a good fit with the leg. I just repeated that process to create the four notches in the sides of the bench. Man, that is such a satisfying process being able to clear away that much material so quickly. I was a little worried this workpiece would be too big to do this operation, but it actually went pretty smooth. And now that I have the notches in the bench, I need to create the mating notches in the legs. 
The goal here is for the legs to recess into the sides of the bench and sit flush with the sides. To make this cut, I use a table saw to establish the top and bottom of the notch in two passes. Now I could finish this cut off with a handsaw as well, but the bandsaw does a nice job too. Even though I plan on using epoxy on these legs, I thought it might be a good idea to reinforce them with screws. At the very least, the screws can act as clamps while the epoxy cures, so I don't need to fool around with those. Once I have my pilot holes cut, I add plenty of epoxy to the joints. It's a good idea to make sure to apply enough epoxy to the end grain as it really soaks this stuff up at first. I want to make sure I get a solid connection here and that I don't starve the joint of epoxy. And you can see the leg just slides in nicely thanks to the epoxy being pretty slippery. Then I just added a couple of 3 inch screws to the legs and it tightens everything up nicely. Now on this leg even the epoxy wasn't helping it slide in easily so I needed to apply a little persuasion. I just made sure to use a rubber dead blow mallet here because this cedar is pretty soft and I didn't want to dent the face of the leg. It's also a good idea just to double check everything for square before moving on. To cover up the screw holes I wanted to make some plugs and man this is such a satisfying process. This plug cutting bit on the drill press cuts this cedar so effortlessly and I really love how the plugs just pop right out with a screwdriver nice and clean. I just applied a copious amount of epoxy and plugged the holes. Once dried a flush trim saw takes care of the excess material and the rest can be sanded flush later. And by later I mean right now. The first bit of sanding I did here was with an aggressive 60 grit disc. I did this to clean up any of the mill marks and also sand away the glue stains at the joints. This Rotex sander is like a magic eraser on cedar. And after I had the rough sanding done, I went over the whole bench with a finished sander up to 150 grit. Now this bench is going to live outdoors and so I'm going to be applying a heavy film finish to this and so it doesn't really make much sense to sand higher than 150 because you're only going to be feeling the finish in the end, not the wood. Now I went back and broke the edges with a hand plane where I could and used my sander in hard to reach places. I also remembered to chamfer the bottom of the feet to prevent chip out. And just for kicks I broke out the hand plane on the other side of the bench to even up some spots where the legs weren't quite flush before repeating sanding on that side. Now for the finishing process on this bench, I'm going to start by applying Total Boat's Epoxy Sealer. This stuff is very thin and almost like water and I'm applying it with a roller. This cedar just drank this stuff up which is perfect because it's going to help deepen the protection inside the wood for down the road. And if it looked like the wood drank up all the sealer, I went back over those spots with some more. Now once the sealer was cured, I sanded everything with 320 grit sandpaper just to knock down any dust nibs. Now you can tell when this stuff is ready because it's going to produce a fine dust when sanding and it's not going to be gummy at all. A quick wipe down with a tack cloth to remove the majority of the sanding dust and it's time to apply the varnish. I'm using Total Boat's Gleam 2 Marine Varnish as a top coat here. I'm going to be applying this with a foam brush, but a nice oil-based bristle brush would also be good to use here too. I applied three coats of the high gloss before adding two coats of flat to knock down the sheen to my liking. And wow, I really love how these things turned out. The color of that cedar just really pops. Not only do they look great, but they're also well protected from the outdoor elements. 